Hi, my name is Romero Trevino from AgXL, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating the AgXL GX7 roll by roll monitoring solution that's uh, implemented on the Droid tablet. And it's basically a roll by roll solution that has a flow meter monitoring every single roll. And then the flow meter will also track your ounces per minute per roll, your overall gallons per minute per roll, your gallons per acre, any issues with a roll. So if a roll starts to plug and whatnot or reduce the, the velocity of it, it'll start to show you on the screen. And then it'll also track it with GPS coordinates in the field so that we can map it and uh, create a shape file to be able to overlay that with other uh, applications in the field. Uh, but today what we're gonna be doing is testing this our GX7 and showing you how it works with Black Label. As you know, Black Label, very, very viscous solution, uh, dark colored, you can see it running through the system. Most uh, systems today use the floating ball manifold, but unfortunately because of the color of Black Label, it's very difficult to see anything. So if a roll starts to have issues, plugging or whatnot, of course, then you can't determine that by the manifold. And so we're gonna show you today how the GX7 works uh, very well in monitoring uh, and managing the black label product uh, in a roll by roll solution. So we have a GX2 pump system running. We're running at, uh, let's see, five miles an hour and at five gallons an acre, which is about 0.76 gallons per minute. And if you notice on the tablet here for the GX7, this is the home page and we have six rows that we're monitoring here and the six rows are showing what we're putting out uh, on each individual row and so you can tell by the top there there's 15.7 15.9 and then uh, 16.0 and so you'll see that's the amount of ounces that are coming out on each row so if you did the math five miles an hour at five gallons an acre will be about 16.2 ounces a minute per row and so this is monitoring that uh, setup. If you wanted to see the rows in, as, uh, in, uh, next to each other, we can go to a different screenshot here, and then it'll show you the rows there as well. And so it's basically, uh, there's a threshold limit. So if you wanna make sure that, that um, you're achieving right on target or you're okay above or below a little, maybe there's a little plugging in the orifice or in the microtubing. In this case, we are using microtubing. Uh, we can set our thresholds accordingly. Uh, if you want to narrow it down even more, you can push on that row. It'll take you to a, a secondary screen, and that screen will show you exactly what that row is doing uh, individually, what your target should be. As I mentioned, in this case, it should be 16.2 ounces a minute per row. What your actual is, so actually what the flow meter is detecting, and then in this case, 16.6, 16.4, uh, 16.7 so and then it also does a variance it shows you exactly what the variance whether it's a plus or minus on that row and then we're also capturing liquid temperature so the temperature of the liquid would be put there as well and then a timestamp and then we use the timestamp of course to be able to track when the application took place and then also uh, when we're mapping it so if we go back to the dashboard you notice we have a dashboard the farm view and I'll show that later rows and then our settings so our settings allows us to do our implement settings our job details so we can record all our jobs the field location the field name the total amount of acres uh, the list just goes on, on on what we can capture for that the fertilizer type uh, in this case of course it's a black label job description we're doing it in furrow so it allows us to track all the pertinent information so that we can uh, track that and again we get all this loaded and uh, stored in the system and then under our implement details it, it talks about uh, the rows it'll go out and auto detect how many rows how many flow meters are on each row the spacing the application rate and so forth we even have a, a demo mode so if you want to use the app to be able to demo the product uh, it'll go on in a demo mode as well and then there's our threshold so you can set your thresholds to alarm you when you want the system to detect whether it's flowing at a at a various uh, percentage above or below the rate that you're after. Uh, your flow meter calibration is set. And then we also have a K factor in there for the different viscosities of the liquid. And all this information is tracked and stored in the system. And then you can see here, uh, there's a spot that says upload data to AgXL Cloud. So you can upload the data 
uh, and or maybe get a, you can create a shape file to be able to use that. But all this data is stored if you want it to be captured and stored. You can also monitor without saving any of the data on there. So if we go back to the dashboard, it goes back and we're capturing actual gallons per acre that's occurring at that time, your target gallons per acre, the field name, the fertilizer type, overall gallons per minute, ounces uh, uh, per minute per roll on average, and then your current speed. In this case, of course, we're simulating five miles an hour. And then any kind of errors that come up, maybe there's a, a roll that dropped off, came back, and that could be caused by a variety of things. There could be an error bubble in the line. There could be a lot of different scenarios that, that create that. Or if a, if a roll plugs, you'll, you'll see it right here on the target uh, diagnostics. It'll show up immediately. But if all the rolls are green and uh, they're flowing, then you know everything's flowing right. Again, this is black label running through the system and we're able to track each individual row on how it's performing. Now, if I were to simulate a plugged row, so I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna shut this row off. And as I shut this row off, you'll see it drop. It's starting to drop on there. The row completely dropped and all of a sudden, now all the other rows shot up, which is a critical element because if you have one row that plugged and basically you're, you are averaging 16.2 ounces a minute per row, when that row plugs, the system, your, your electric system, fertilizer system, is not going to so slow down to accommodate that. It doesn't know that that row just shut off. So now look what happens here. You're over applying on all your other rows. So now we're detecting 21 ounces, 21.8, 20, uh, 20 ounces, 20.7. So all these other rows are now over applying because this one row went offline. And when it went offline, which is a critical element, you know uh, that's not a good thing because the goal, of course, is precision. You want to, six, you want to get 16.2 ounces, and in this case, we're over applying in those rows. So if I were to turn this back on, this row comes back on, you'll see the row number one start to come back. There it is. Comes back in, and now every row's uh, back to uh, their routine monitoring, and we're green, and everything looks good. So we're able to track that with uh, the flow meter on every single row. Now I mentioned farm view in this case, um, when you're live out in the field, we have a, on, the, on our controller, there's a connection for the farm view GPS. So we can tap right into whether it's a green star, or Trimble Ag Leader, we have our own GPS module. It gets plugged into our, 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 um, our central module hub. And then what we do basically is we can track in the field exactly what's happening. So in this case, we have it with it, uh, the field here, and so it's tracking it through the system here. And each line represents a row, and that row is applying the liquid. And anytime you see a red, like we showed blue, red, green, you'll see that show up in the field where, where the um, application is having problems or whether it over or under applied. And we can, of course, set this to different types of screens, however you want to set it up. There's a hybrid, a terrain, of course. Uh, there's satellite view. And then there's also a box on the left, a information box, the temperature, the current speed, average gallons per acre, and so forth. So we track a lot of information here and uh, allows us to basically uh, store this information and then we're gonna be able to use this to overlay this with other shape files that we create. Now, one of the neat features of the GX7 app is that we built some intelligence into it, uh, given that it's going to be monitoring uh, various types of fertilizers. Like in this case, we've been showing Black Label, but there's a lot of other products out there that the viscosity varies. And so we built the intelligence in there to be able to self-calibrate and find what the sweet spot is on the calibration number so that when the viscosity changes Let's say in the morning the, the liquid's a little bit heavier because it's cold out. And then as the day warms up, of course, the fertilizer starts to thin out. And then once it thins out, of course, it's moving a lot easier, flows easier. And so the calibration number is affected. Uh, in some cases, it's very minimal. Some, sometimes you never have to recalibrate it. But there are times when uh, the changes uh, can, be, uh, can affect your rate dramatically. So in this case, what we've done is that we built the intelligence in here to be able to auto detect that and self calibrate. 
and I'm going to show you is when I launched the app, when I started, again, we're monitoring six rows here uh, with Black Label. And as I launch it, we previously set this up to, to uh, monitor water. So water is about eight and a half, 8.2 pounds. Um, and so what we've done is you'll see it when it starts off, it's set up and it's, and it's monitoring water. And right away, it's going to detect the viscosity of the liquid, uh, the flow rate of it, because it knows the speed of it as it flows through. So as I set it, you'll see the rows come up and then you'll see it auto detect that. So I launched it. Now we're seeing each row set up and it's, and it's monitoring. You're going to see a flash across the bottom of the screen. And as that flash comes across, you'll see the rows adjust. There it goes. It made an adjustment on that. All the rows went up. It knows that um, based off of the viscosity, based off of the flow of the, of the, uh, of the flow meter, it does its calculation and boom, knocks it right in. And now we're back up to 16.2 ounces a minute, uh, going for five gallons an acre. And each row does so accordingly. And then it tracks that, of course, so it knows that I'm, I need to get 16.2 ounces. And then any variance from that, it's, it's going to be able to, to detect that. So that self-calibration is, is very intelligent. It allows it to be able to adjust to the viscosity change of the liquid, therefore giving you a more precise measurement. And yeah, you know, as you're going through the field, uh, 0.5 ounces, maybe even one ounce isn't so bad. Yeah, it's gonna, it, it may apply to the other rows, but the nice feature of this, this auto calibrate is that now you know you're getting precision on every single row. And that's the critical part is that, especially if you're doing any kind of variance test or, or any kind of seed breed variations, and you're putting down fertilizer, you want to make sure that you can eliminate that, hey, I know I put down 16.3 ounces per row on average. You can eliminate the fact that, okay, was it uh, over uh, two ounces, under two ounces? No, I know exactly what I put down on that row. So that auto, auto calibrate feature works extremely well, and it's a, it's a great tool to ensure that we're putting down precision application on every single row. Well, that's a brief demonstration on our GX7 row-by-row -row monitoring solution. It's able to monitor down to the lowest extremes, one, two gallons an acre, all the way to 50, 60 gallons an acre. Uh, we set these systems up to be able to track and monitor whether you're planting, drilling, strip tilling, side dressing, spraying, it doesn't matter. We, we're able to track all this information. Uh, the system itself can track up to 240 rows, and so it has no problem being able to achieve even the wide uh, implements that are out there.